Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at translations. Now a translation is a type of transformation and a translation in itself just means to move a shape and we're going to be moving shapes left or right, up or down. Now before we get started, obviously grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, but we're going to go quite quickly through these questions. We're going to have a look at one type or one of each type of question and a couple for you to have a go at, so it's going to be a relatively quick one. Now for this question here, we've broken it up into two parts and we're going to do them both on this one grid. And as you can see on the grid, we've got a triangle there drawn um, at this position here, obviously, over in the positive section. Now when we translate a shape, what's going to happen is this triangle is going to move somewhere else. Now it doesn't necessarily have to go into any of the other sections, but it's going to move somewhere within this grid. So if we have a look at this first one to start with, it says translate the triangle by the vector. And then we have minus four on the top and three on the bottom. Now, if you don't have a very good understanding of vectors, there is a full video that I have done on column vectors, which I'll link in the description uh, link in the description for you to have a go at. But in regards to this one, we're going to go through it relatively quickly. So that number on the top there represents going left or right. So a positive number moves it right. And if we have a look on the grid, look, the positive numbers go to the right and the negative numbers go to the left. So a positive number on the top indicates moving right and a negative number indicates moving left. And that goes for the same on the bottom, except the bottom number there is representing moving up and down. So again, positive numbers move it up and negative numbers move it down. Now the way to go about doing these is just to pick one of the corners or one of the vertices on the shape. I'm going to pick that top one there. I'm going to move that point four to the left as we have negative four on the top, and I'm gonna move it by three up. So let's move that. So we go one, two, three, four to the left, and then one, two, three up, and that's gonna finish off just there. Now, I would encourage you to draw these lines in, although you certainly don't have to. Obviously, if you do draw them in, just do them nice and lightly in pencil. Now I'm going to get rid of that and we're going to draw it in from that point. Now just be careful, obviously, we're going to redraw it in from the point that we actually moved, so that top position of the triangle. So from there we need to go down by two, again just keep looking at the triangle, it goes across by one, so across one, and then join it up. And obviously if the question says to label it with a letter or to shade it in or something like that, then obviously just make sure you do that as well. Now let's look at the next one. The next one's slightly different because it's going to move it slightly differently because this time our vector says to move it two on the top and minus four on the bottom. So two on the top would indicate a movement of two to the right and negative four on the bottom is four down. I'm going to pick a different corner this time. Let's go for this bottom right one. So two to the right, so that would be one, two, and then four down, so one, two, three, four. And there we go, and let's just put a little cross there. And obviously this time then we're going to be drawing this particular triangle in from that bottom right corner. So we need to draw the base in to start with, up two for that triangle, and again joining it up, and again doing that nice and neatly with uh, a pencil and a ruler ideally. So there we go, that's how we're going to move shapes using a vector. And now let's have a look at a quick question for you to have a go at. Okay, here we go, so it should be nice and quick. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to draw this on the screen, but if you imagine where it's gonna go, maybe trace your finger along the screen just to see where the actual shape is gonna to move to, and pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so for this one, so the first vector is minus five, three. So I'm gonna pick this top corner here. I'm gonna go five to the left, one, two, three, four, five, and then three up, one, two, three. And let's just put a little cross there. We'll get rid of that. And then we'll draw it in so it goes two down then it goes diagonally by one and then we can join it up there we go and there's our first one the second one let's have a look it goes two to the right again i'm going to use this one here so one two to the right and then one two three down and again we'll put a little cross there and then we'll draw that one in so again from that bottom right corner it goes diagonally to the right by one then it goes up by two and then again join that up Okay, there we go. So that is obviously how to do a translation. Now let's have a look at how to describe one. Okay, so we've got a question here. It says, describe fully the single transformation that maps shape P onto shape Q. So we're gonna go from the shape on the left to the shape on the right. Now the process is pretty much the same here. We just need to figure out how far it's actually moved. So let's match up some similar corners. So we've got this one on the top right and we'll match it up to that one there. Let's have a look how we get there. So from P to Q, so we'd have to go right, one, two, three. So that's three to the right, and then one down, 
And there we go, so three to the right and one down, and we could even put a minus one there as we know that one down is gonna be a minus. So in order to draw or write out our description here, we are gonna to have to state what kind of transformation it is. So we know that that is a translation. So we can say it's a translation, or we can, we can also say it's been translated. So I'm gonna write a translation. There we go, so a translation. And then in order to describe the movement, we give the vector. So I'm gonna say a translation, I'm gonna say by the vector, or you could say using the vector or anything along those lines. And then we just need to write that vector in in our bracket. So that's three to the right, so that's positive three on the top. And then one down, so that's negative one on the bottom. And there we go, that'll be four marks for us on that question. Alternatively with this question, obviously, you could be asked how to get from Q to P. And that would have been slightly different because actually to get from Q to P, we would have gone three to the left and we'd have gone one up. So it would have been pretty much the same vector, but the symbols in front of those numbers would be different. We'd have minus three and we'd have positive one if we were going in the other direction. So there we go, that's how we're gonna describe a translation. It's very important that you include all of these words. You do need to say the word translation, the word moved is not going to get you the marks for this because that's, that's not the transformation. The transformation is called a translation. And we also do need to give that vector and ideally stating that by the vector and actually then giving it. So here we go, here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions here. Both of these, I'd like you to describe the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. Obviously, don't forget all those words and the important language, and you should hopefully be able to do this off the screen because you can probably trace your finger along the grid there if you pause it. So there we go, pause the video, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so for this first one then. Now obviously for both of these, we need to say it's been translated by the vector. As we've got limited space here, I'm just gonna write down what that vector is, but don't forget you do have to write those words down. So for this one here on the left, let's have a look at that one to start with. We'll go from the top corner to the top corner here. And again, it doesn't matter which corner you chose, you should get the same vector here. So that's gonna be one, two, three. Oh, actually, I've gone too far there. Let's get rid of that and do that again. One, two, so it's just two to the left, so that's minus two. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, four down, so that's minus four. So in terms of our vector for that one, we're gonna have minus two and minus four, so our final answer will be translated by the vector minus two minus four. On to the next one. Again, doesn't matter which corner you pick. I'm gonna pick this one in the top right. And from A to B, let's not overrun this time, that is going one, two, three, four to the right and it's going one, two, three down, so minus three. So again, full use of language there, it's been translated by the vector four over minus three. There we go, and that's how you describe a translation. Right, okay, we've got one more question to finish off, just looking at some of these column vectors, so let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so this question says, shape A is translated by the vector two over minus four to make shape B, and then shape B is translated by the vector minus three minus two to make shape C. Describe the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape C. Okay, so for this question here, we could actually draw this on a grid, but if we don't have a grid there, it's gonna be quite complex to actually think about that. Because if we imagine we start at a point here, it goes one, two across, and then it goes one, two, three, four down, it ends up somewhere here, and then the next one goes minus three, minus two, so it goes one, two, three, and then down two again. It's all, all of a sudden starting to look quite complicated, and it wants to know how we get from point A over here down to this point C, obviously with this being B. But this is the movement that it's done and it wants to know how we just get straight down to there in one movement. Now that's obviously looking quite complicated. If we had a nice squared grid, we could do that. And we could actually do it via the numbers here, but there's a nice, quick, easy way of doing this. And again, I mentioned that in the description, there is a video on column vectors and how to approach these. And I would suggest watching that, obviously for some of the more complex ones, as this one actually isn't too bad. But if we have a look at actually going about the maths behind this, quite simply, all we need to do is combine these vectors. So if we take the vector two minus four, and by combining it, I mean we're just gonna add them together, and we add in this next vector here, minus three, minus two, and we see what the total of those is. Now again, with a column vector, it is as simple as just adding the top numbers and adding the bottom numbers. So two add negative three is negative one, and negative four add negative two is negative six. And there we go, and that is our overall vector. And you can kind of imagine that that makes sense. If I move, and let's have a look at the top numbers, two to the right, and then three to the left, well overall I've actually just gone one to the left. 
and the same with the number on the bottom. If I go four down and then I go another two down, well, in total that's six down. So there we go, the single transformation, and again, it does say to describe that transformation. So we would need to say a translation. There we go, translation by the vector. And then obviously just drawing that vector in, so minus one, minus six, and there we go, we're done. Right, one of these questions for you to have a go at then before we finish, and that'll be our last one. So let's have a go. Okay, so here you go, final question. Have a go at this one, pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers. Okay, so let's have a look then. So we've got the same sort of transformations. We've got minus three and minus seven to start with, and we're then doing the next transformation, which is four minus three. And we wanna know the overall movement there, so it's gone three to the left and then four to the right. Adding those together, that gives us a total movement of one. And then negative seven, down another three, and that gives us a final movement of minus 10 going down. So there's our vector. And again, just finishing it off with the description, a translation, there we go, translation by the vector. There we go, and it is one and minus 10. There we go, and there's our final answer. So there we go, that's how you can go about doing a translation, describing a translation, and also looking at these kind of vector questions. But again, as I said, do make sure that you have a look at the column vector video for the next one, just to have a look at some of these more complicated vector questions. Other than that, have a look in the description for the rest of the series on transformations. Obviously you've got reflections, rotations, enlargements, and for those of you doing the higher paper, you've also got those negative and fractional enlargements of what, as well. And again, they're all, they're all gonna be in this description, so hopefully that was useful and helpful. If it was, please like, please comment, please subscribe and I'll see you for the next one.